hi and welcome back to the channel uh, today we're reviewing uh, MSR D1 mini thrower um, this is from the International Outdoor Store um, from Hank Wang um, so I ordered this up, shipping was pretty quick um, and we're going to take a little look at this um, then we'll go outside and we'll, we'll have a look at some beam shots as well um, so it comes in a few different colours, I went for the, for the I think it's called cyan or blue um, it looks really really nice um, it's one of these flashlights that so feels really really good in the hand uh, I'm not quite sure how or why um, but it's really quite um, short in its dimensions um, we've got an 18650 battery here um, it's just really really quite comfortable in the hand to hold um, even with the, uh, the pocket clip on there so we've got a deep carry pocket clip um, which is fantastic um, it will also tail stand lovely um, and we've got a really nice uh, easy to use side switch there's no option of getting like the raised bezel I know on some of the other lights they do you can option uh, a different um, sort of uh, bezel around the switch um, although I've had absolutely no problems with this one activating in my pocket which is fantastic um, and we also get the, uh, the stainless steel uh, bezel at the front um, there's a whole host of different emitter options um, on this light it's really quite extensive um, now the light is actually really good value um, I think if you go for most of the emitter options um, you know it makes it very very good value um, with this particular one I've actually gone for the uh, the SPT 90.2 um, which believe it or not does almost double the price of the light um, but I've really wanted to get uh, a torch that's got this emitter for ages um, so I have got one now um, but I don't think that necessarily is the only emitter to get and there's some very good choices out there um, assembly and machining looks really great on it we've got nice square threads, we've got a, a magnetic tail cap as well um, which is optional but I think that's going to be really handy and currently I'm running it on a Samsung 30Q um, the UI on this one is uh, and a real two, um, so it's quite extensive on how you can actually use it and the different modes. Um, but you've basically got all the ramping modes um, and everything else that and real can do. Which I suggest you do Google if you want to know a little bit more about it. Um, the side button here will light up as well. I don't think we'll see it um, at the moment, um, but on the night shots, you'll be able to see that that button does illuminate as well, and you've got certain control over it. Um, and you can do lots of fancy things such as uh, lock the light out from the UI one, two, three, four for lock out and that will give you uh, then a momentary mode as well on the switch um, I believe it's supposed to give you two outputs on the momentary um, so based on other Anduril lights I've got or Anduril 1 one click would give you one output and two clicks would give you a slightly higher one on this light they seem to be exactly the same I'm not sure if you can configure that or if there's the same peculiar with uh, this particular emitter that means that you know it's the same output but there you are um, in terms of specs so with this emitter uh, it's actually rated at 4,000 lumens and 100,000 CD um, which are some pretty big numbers from a, a pretty tiny package um, so I've got a few lights I was going to sort of compare it to I think most notable would be another light from uh, the International Outdoor Store, which is the, the KR1. Uh, this one's actually branded Noctigan, and this one's branded uh, MSR. Uh, I've got no idea what the actual difference is between their two brands. Some seem to be one and some seem to be another. Um, now you'd think on face value that these two lights would be quite similar and maybe share components, um, but, the, but they don't actually seem to. In fact, you should be able to see on the camera, they're actually a slightly different colour. And the bezels are also slightly different this one seems to have a little bit of a taper in on it and the designs are so slightly different on the front where you'd think they'd perhaps be interchangeable um, of course the KR1 is a tail switch uh, which has actually got a trit in there as well now I really like this light, you might have seen my review, I'll put a link to it um, I bought this one last year and I, I was totally blown away by the performance of this little light um, I've got the Osram W2 emitter in this one but the crying shame of it was that this switch on the back just kept on activating in your pocket 
uh, and I like to EDC these in my you know sort of right hand jeans pocket I don't want to be unscrewing the cap I don't want to be having to do four clicks to lock it every time I put it away and four clicks again just to be able to use it you know I kind of want to just EDC it like I do any other torch um, which was a real shame because it meant that even though this was awesome I just couldn't EDC it also with the uh, with the W2 emitter um, it's a fantastic thrower this is also around 100,000 CD um, and about 1200 lumens but it is very much a specialist beam um, up close it's pretty useless and for walking it's not that great unless you're just shining it down range all the time because you have a really intense hot spot um, still really like it I think this is impressive and the idea was to have something that had similar capabilities in terms of throw but a bit more of a dynamic beam that you could do a little bit more with it which is why I went for the, the SPT 90.2 um, not sure I'm not I'm not unhappy with it um, but it hasn't perhaps blown me away to the extent I thought it would um, but before we get on to that let's just have a little look I was saying about size um, as we can see very very similar size but the uh, the side switch D1 is a little bit shorter I've got an extra ring on the top of my KR1 which was an attempt to try and stop it activating in the pocket which definitely reduced it but it never solved it um, but they're both really really nice lights um, but I say they don't share anything really um, the pocket clips are different this one's actually a, a ring that goes underneath the tail cap and uh, that's a clip on one um, I don't know if the reflectors are the same they look very similar, I haven't taken them apart, but considering everything else is different, um, it wouldn't surprise me if they are um, also different. But just to kind of show the size of it being really small, I've got a, a Convoy uh, S2, yeah, S2, um, tube light. This is the sort of thing I'd normally EDC, and you can see the D1 is actually quite a bit shorter, and it doesn't feel like it's particularly massively heavier either there's probably a little bit more heft to it but you know in the hand it's just such a nice shape to hold um, and it's a little bit big in the pocket but I would quite happily EDC that um, you know just as I would a tube light so what I was hoping for is something that can offer me more output for longer with perhaps a bit more thermal mass and obviously more more throw more downrange um, beam penetration that you're going to get with a tube light. Um, I mean, this one's quite quite throwy for tube light. It's got a quite a deep, smooth reflector with a, an XPL HI in there. Um, but we're still only talking sort of 16,000 CD, so a long way off of what most people would call a, a thrower. Um, oddly, in my collection, on paper, the closest light I've got to the D1 in terms of specs is actually the Astrolux FTO3. Um, which is a really nice light, I really like this. Um, this has got the uh, XHP 50.2, a um, little bit cool, it's 5700 Kelvin um, and it runs on a, a 26650 so it's quite a chunky light um, as you can see, I mean the, the D1 is smaller than the entire handle uh, of the FT03 but this also pumps out around 4000 lumen and has I think on paper about 110,000 CD um, so they should be really quite comparable. In practice what happens is this does do 4000 lumen, I think I measured it um, about 100 or so lumen over on my light box but I can only get 84,000 CD out of it so quite a bit under the 100,000 CD rating um, whereas this one here on regular 26650 I do actually record 110 1000 CD and on a high performance 21700 uh, I was getting a hun over 130,000 CD uh, and indeed with the little KR1 um, this was clocking in at uh, over 100,000 as well um, and you can if you go you can see when you go and use them outdoors that even though this is impressive it doesn't quite have the throw of the others um, so I'm not quite sure on the numbers there why they don't add up um, the LED looks well centered and well focused and if it's making the, the looming count then I don't know why it's not making the CD count uh, but maybe it's just all in the measurements and, and you know how they're being produced um, what I would say is this does get very very hot so the turbo mode literally ramps down as soon as you activate it 
and after 30 seconds um, it's you know and it's only a couple of hundred lumens going from 4000 um, and it does get quite toasty so that peak figure is a bit of a show-off figure um, whereas something big like the FGO3 while it's still going to sag it's got a lot more mass so it can sustain a high output and even on non-turbo just on normal high um, this will get quite warm quite quick um, and it will start and dip um, so I've done some tail cap amp ratings and on high the top of the ramping um, it's sucking eight and a half uh, amps which is the same as what the uh, the W2 does um, on turbo um, and when this is on turbo um, we're just well it was just under 11 amps um, so it's definitely quite a bit more um, being pulled uh, on the turbo mode but it's good and it's bad I mean obviously it gives you that blast performance if you need it um, but with an 18650 you do notice the run times and the voltage on your battery drops very very quickly um, I do wonder if this would be perhaps a better setup having a, a 21700 wouldn't perhaps be quite as nice in the hand but a 21700 actually doesn't make the tube that much bigger but you would obviously be able to run a battery that's uh, quite a bit more capable um, so that's kind of where we're at with it um, other things on the light the beam is a little bit ringy if you do a bit of white wall hunting um, it's not really a major concern but I kind of wasn't expecting that um, you've got the smooth reflector there which you kind of want for the throw um, if you shine it at anything that isn't a white wall you don't notice the rings and the beam quality is quite good um, and lastly the tint, I'm not quite sure what the Kelvin rating is um, on this particular emitter because uh, it's not listed on the website in isolation it doesn't look too bad um, but it, it does seem to have a little bit of a green cast to it and I'll be honest in, in some ways even though this is a 5700 Kelvin um, this tends to have a little bit better colour rendition I think um, and we're on a pretty cool white with a W2 but again it's quite pleasant even though it's cold everything looks good um, this one dare I say I'm almost a little disappointed um, with the tint it, it kind of makes things to sort of wash out and look a little bit murky um, colour wise um, but I say it's in isolation you don't notice it so much it's only when you're trying to do a comparison uh, against some of the other lights um, so would I recommend it yeah I think the design is great um, would I recommend it with this emitter I don't know probably jury's out on that one still I kind of like that it it offers a lot, you can use it up close um, so you can have quite a nice um, beam that's that's quite capable of uh, using you know to read a book or do something up close um, but you do get pretty good distance out of it as well um, I imagine something like an SST40 would actually be a really nice emitter in here and maybe even an SST20 if you wanted a bit more throw um, and something with a bit more intense hotspot. Obviously the headline figures aren't going to look great on paper um, but I should think in reality they are actually probably quite nice lights. Um, I haven't yet tried the uh, 519A um, I think that possibly has got potential although I don't quite know how much throw you get out of this small host. I imagine you know sort of a, a 4000 Kelvin high CRI SST emitter is probably going to be a bit better as an all round sort of use um, but we'll have to see definitely lots of options out there and of course you can go for the W1 or the W2 emitter and you've got the same choice as you, as you have with the KR1 um, but this definitely solves the fact that you couldn't EDC the KR1 because it activates whereas this one doesn't um, in your pocket which is great let's take it outside and look at some beam shots hi and welcome to the channel um, got a new torch just come in today um, this is the uh, MSR D1 Mini um, from International Outdoor um, so it's literally just arrived with me um, it's got the SBT90 LED in this one um, so I've never owned a, a torch with this LED in before but I was kind of keen to get one um, it does sort of double the price of this uh, getting this LED but um, I thought it was a good package to try it on um, so we'll give it a go, I mean, we'll do a little review of the light, I'll do a tabletop review in a bit more thorough, um, but you can see we've got a nice deep carry pocket clip, it's got a magnet, uh, magnetic tail cap, that side switch is lighting up, um, I have to dim the camera for that, 
Uh, we've got a stainless steel bezel uh, and Anderil too, um, but we'll give it a go. So as I said, the, uh, the side switch um, actually lights up. Um, when you buy this, you can actually option different colors. Um, I believe you can also control this uh, via uh, the Android 2 UI, although I'm not so familiar with that one. Um, but for the basic modes, uh, Android 2 works the same as the previous one in terms of sort of turning it on and setting your brightness. Um, so we'll just do a click to turn it on. And you can ramp it up and down let's go down way low so got quite a nice semi moonlight quite a nice little low there um, and as we ramp it up we can see it's quite an impressive little light so that's high we're hitting that tree quite easily we've got turbo um, which is really very very bright um, in fact, uh, there's quite a lot of dew on the grass here and it's almost blindingly light. Uh, I would say the light does heat up quite quickly on turbo. So, just step it down a little bit. Um, it's sort of a neutral to coolish white. I wouldn't say it's... It, it's not quite as neutral as a lot of the other lights I have. Um, but it is quite, quite acceptable in terms of the colour rendition. Um, but it's just on that little cooler side. I don't know what the Kelvin rating is. Um, sadly, on the um, the website, it doesn't actually have uh, the K rating for the for the emitter. Um, I'm running this on a Samsung 30Q. Uh, I'll have to do some light box testing and some uh, lux testing to see what it's actually putting out. Um, it definitely seems to be quite impressive. Um, as I say, for a little pocket torch. I mean, this is this is super pocket friendly. Um, you could EDC this easily. I'm hoping with the side switch uh, that it won't turn on in your pocket. Not with the deep carry pocket clip as well. Um, it feels really, really small in the hand. Uh, amazingly small. Um, I think the battery tube is quite thin, uh, which gives it this real nice appearance of being really small. Um, and I'm hoping this is just going to be a very versatile light. But I know it will be a bit power hungry and get hot on turbo but I don't know where we are now well um, we're below maximum and that's warm but it's not really getting any hotter um, and that is a decent amount of light we can still light that tree up over there um, you know you, you don't really need more light than this but you, you know if you need to you can pump it up and you know just light the world up with it which is really impressive um, I've got a few comparison torches that I thought I'd bring out um probably most notably uh would be its sort of sister torch which is the the KR1 so the, I think the KR1 is branded as an octagon um rather than uh, MSR so you can see the octagon this is quite impressive too um but the spill isn't quite as bright and we've got a much smaller spot um, although this also reaches those trees quite well. But can you see, um, the SBT90 was sort of lighting up this entire area, whereas this is much more of a, a pinpoint sort of beam. Uh, we can pump this up to turbo as well. Which, hmm, maybe it's not going to go up onto turbo. Oh, yeah, it's just not that noticeably much brighter than the high at the moment. Um, battery is fully charged, and this is also a Samsung 30Q. Um, this starts to get warm quite quickly but not as hot um, but this is a really nice torch but I find up close you do have a bit of a dancing hot spot it's not quite so good if you're trying to you know sort of walk along with it or if you need to look at anything close um, you know it wouldn't be very good for trying to read a book or for working on a car it's a bit too specialist with that sort of quite narrow intense beam whereas the SPT90 does appear to be um, much more capable of being a general purpose sort of light. 
and you can see the hotspot difference there and just sort of how much light difference that you get from one to the other. These are not maxed out, these are just part way through the, the ramping mode just to give a bit of a comparison. Uh, the tint is better on the SPT90, um, although oddly, even though the uh, the CRI rating and the Kelvin's not very good on the uh, W2, Dodge Ram W2, um, it does give quite acceptable colour. I've never really found it to be a problem. Um, 